Hi everyone, MJ and Izzy here from Endless RVing. We have a really important video for you today. It's quite different from videos we normally do, but this is potentially something that could affect many RVers. Now, if you've watched our channel or if you're new to the channel, welcome. But we do a variety of different RV type of videos. But one of the things that we really try to focus on is quality of RVs as well as the consumer rights for RVers. A lot of times RVs, they just don't work properly. And sometimes we have an issue with that. We don't want you to see see you spend a lot of money and get an RV that doesn't work. In this video, we're going to talk about, like MJ said, a potential problem or a problem that can affect a lot of RVers. So we have on video conference with us, uh, Patrick Howard. He is an attorney that's representing a client. And this is a very different story that we haven't heard of, but it, it is very concerning. So I'm gonna bring Patrick in. He can kind of tell you what is going on. So say hi to everybody, Patrick. Hey, good afternoon, Izzy, MJ. Thank you for having me on your program. Yeah, Happy so we had, you, you approached us uh, and you told us about this issue that you had uh, with one of your clients and how it was something that you believe was a, an ongoing going problem. So you want to speak a little bit to that? Yeah. So I was approached by a gentleman down in Florida who purchased a Thor RV brand new. And after he purchased it, he put about 5,000 miles on it and realized that the vehicle was pulling very hard right, I believe, <clears throat> off the top of my head while he was driving it. I'm not an RVer. So mm -hmm. this stuff is, is all new to me, but I've gotten a good working knowledge here. So they went back to the dealership. The dealership ultimately sent him to a Ford dealership because he has a Ford cutaway as the base of his Thor RV. They attempted to align the vehicle. They told him that the vehicle was aligned. They charged him for that alignment and sent him off. That alignment did not work. The vehicle continued to pull right while he was operating it to the point where, you know, alarms were going off. He had his family on a road trip and he told me he was terrified by it. He went through the process of the warranty claim with Thor RV. Thor told him that it was a Ford problem, not a Thor problem. Ford ultimately refused his warranty claim. And what we discovered over about a course of a year of an investigation prior to filing a lawsuit was that Ford builds these cutaways without the ability to adjust camber and caster. And I know your audience probably knows what that means, but I had to go ahead and figure that out. Uh, what it means is just that the suspension, when the vehicle gets loaded, right, the wheels will bend in from the weight of the, the RV being built on top of it. And the weight of that will cause the RV, the suspension to drag like this, which eventually will cause that sort of pulling that my client was experiencing. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of cars, or most cars, allow for that camber and caster to be adjusted either by a dealership or by the owner themselves. The Ford design of their cutaways does not account for an adjustable caster in camber. And so even though Ford knows that those vehicles are going to be built on, built out, and in fact represents that those vehicles can be built to a weight of 14,500 pounds, without the adjustable camber and caster, caster sleeves on the car, on the vehicle, it's gonna pull. Mm -hmm. And it's never gonna be alignable until you either replace those camber and caster sleeves or you add aftermarket parts. And that's exactly what happened with my client. He continued to try to have the vehicle aligned and then ultimately was just told by a Ford dealership, you have to add these aftermarket parts of which cost him close to $1,000, I think $852. And so, you know, what I've learned is that there's manufacturers out there like Safety Plus uh, and others who intentionally design these fixes for this Candor and Casper adjustment. But it's our position that Ford knows that these vehicles are going to be used to be built out into not just RVs, but ambulances, uh, box trucks, all sorts of, you know, modified vehicles. And so, you know, they have a responsibility to make sure that those vehicles can carry the gross vehicle weight stated on the placard that's inside the door jam. And so, like I said, most of those vehicles are rated to 14,500 pounds, but without the aftermarket parts, the vehicle can't haul that weight. And so we fought a lawsuit against Ford this past summer, and we're still in the early throes of it. But I, you know, obviously, I I thought it might be of interest to your viewers, and was interested in learning if others who subscribe to your channel have had this sort of problem. So I have a couple of questions. Well, do you know remember what year the 
the motorhome was? I believe it's a 2021. And it's on, do you remember, was it uh, E350 or the E450 cutaway chassis? I believe it's the E350. Right. So I, I believe you had sent us some documents prior to, you know, doing this video that Ford actually advertises this chassis for multiple uses, including RVs. Yes. Yeah. And, and interestingly, in the course of the, the, the infancy of the litigation, they've already admitted that, yeah, this camber and caster is, uh, caster is not adjustable. And that, yes, in order to fix cam camber and caster, you need to add these aftermarket parts. And that's kind of left us scratching our heads going, well, if, if that's the case, then how could you represent the vehicle as being able to tow 14,500, or not tow, excuse me, the gross vehicle weight rating as 14,500 pounds? We haven't gotten a straight answer for that yet, but I'm hoping we eventually will. Now, I have one other question uh, regarding... Did you did you have an outside expert or mechanic kind of estimate how much these parts would cost if it came from the factory? Like just just instead of having a non-adjustable and adjustable caster camber? We didn't have an expert do that sort of analysis directly, but you know, we did we did have a consulting expert who went and and test drove not only our client's vehicle, but went to RV dealerships and drove the same sort of Thor cutaway recreational vehicles and found that, yes, our clients post um, repair solved the problem and vehicles that are on lots in Florida ready for sale have the problem. And so according to the expert, it, it isn't but a few, it's a de minimis amount of money that would be required to make, to solve the problem. I think the, the actual cost, not to the consumer, but to Ford, is less than a hundred dollars and so by changing the design or adding adjustable camber and casper caster sleeves you know you could solve this problem for less than a hundred bucks wow <laughs> can you talk a little bit about what laws if any did ford violate here good question uh you know because ford actually warrants they have a warranty uh for vehicle alignment that's available to purchasers for the first 12 months, 12,000 miles, our position is, is that regardless of the extent of which, uh, you know, of what was required to make the car align, Ford should be footing that bill. They have an express warranty that covers that. So we, we filed a, a claim for breach of express warranty. We also filed a claim for uh, consumer deception or, or consumer fraud, uh, depends on the state you're in, but our, our clients in Florida, because, you know, Ford makes these specific representation. Ford knows that the vehicle is going to be built out. It knows that it's selling these vehicles to RV manufacturers to, to put motorhomes together. And then Ford then warrants the alignment, but then pulls that warranty away if you go to have the car aligned because they say, oh, you had the vehicle modified, if you can believe that. Ford knows that the vehicle is being sold for the strict purpose of modification but then disclaims warranty coverage when you actually go and say, hey, I'm, I want you to, to align my vehicle pursuant to the warranty. And they say, well, the vehicle's been modified. That, uh, to me, reeks of deception. It reeks of the, 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 you know, just a pure bait switch. You know, you pay for the warranty that you get with a vehicle is built to, into the cost of the car. Don't think for a minute that vehicle manufacturers don't account for the warranty cost when you buy a car. And so that warranty is built into the cost of the Ford cutaway, which ultimately is paid for by the consumer. And so you're paying for a warranty that they're just going to turn around and disclaim uh, and say that, you know, the coverage isn't available because Thor turned the cutaway into a motorhome. You might want to rewind and listen to that again if you're watching at home because <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it sounds as unbelievable as it is. And, and what's uh, you said you don't know many, but much about RVs, but uh, in the gas motorhome business, Ford's the only game in town. Like, that's it. There's that's no it. other chassis. As far as new, there's no other manufacturers making gas chassis. So they have the Class A motorhome, you know, the cutaways for this. Class C's. So yeah, it's, it's a monopoly of very, very interesting. Yes, on the gas I, so you have you said your clients down in Florida. Our assumption is yes. this, your assumption probably is as many more people that have been affected by this. Well, yeah, look, you know, there there's been some correspondence between when my client was out looking to try to solve this problem. He wanted he 
<clears throat> it was the summertime. His kids were out of school. They wanted to use the RV. They wanted to go, you know, camping and do all the fun stuff you can do. You know, he wasn't getting a fix. And so he he did a bunch of research online and the folks at Safety Plus, which again, you probably know and your viewers yeah. probably know. We have it on a motorhome. Yeah. Yeah, I said to him, we see this all the time. You gotta, you gotta buy our our sway bars and put them on your vehicle, on your Ford vehicle, and that'll solve the problem. Parts themselves were just over six hundred dollars, yeah. not including installation. Seems to me that if you buy a new car, it should track the road. Yeah, uh, you haven't bought an RV yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all they can follow. So something tells me that your client is probably not the only one this affected. Is there anything else that you would want to add for the people that are watching? Any other pertinent information? You know, I, as I, you know, told you guys, I want to hear these stories. You know, one of the things too that Ford initially told us is that they don't see this problem. That it's not prevalent in their. Uh, warranty database. And so, you know, certainly my client in Florida has the paperwork to establish what he went through. You know, I guess I'm doing not only putting this issue out for your for your viewers to, to watch and understand, but at the same time, I'm looking for information as well. I, I want to know what experiences others have had with the same vehicle. And, and it, it doesn't really matter to me, you know, what year you have, when you had it, we're just interested to learn more about um, your viewers' experience with this sort of circumstance. So we have your your number, your contact number down below, but if you just want to say it for everybody out there, if they want to get in contact with you with the issue with Ford, their Ford Motorhome, what's the best way to reach you? You can go ahead and call me. That's my, um, that's my office number. I'd be happy to talk to you. If you prefer not to call and just send an email, I'm happy to engage. I know we're, I'm still old school, still <laughs> get on the phone and... <laughs> Today, everyone likes to text or email, but you could send me an email. It's my first initial P, last name Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D, at S as in Sam, M as in Michael, B as in boy, B as in boy.com, S-M-B-B.com. Send me an email, put Ford Cutaway in the subject and tell me your story and I'll email you back. And if you're interested in chatting with me, we'll, we can jump on the phone. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested in hearing others' experience with the same issue. Yeah, I'm sure you, you'll probably going to hear from other yes. people. <laughs> uh, but we, we do appreciate uh, you reaching out to us uh, because I think you found us because we had an issue with our Ford motorhome that was a warranty claim. You know, I, I had to call corporate over several weeks to get them to pay. And it, it was kind of a, a little bit of a battle. We really are about the consumer. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm glad you got in touch with us and I'm glad we're putting out this type of video so the consumer at least have a, has a voice. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm with you. That's all I really do is uh, practice in the area of consumer protection and uh, consumer rights. And so, again, even for someone who knows not all that much about RVs uh, or RVing in general, it just seems to me that this stuff, we, we took it on and, and we're willing to talk to others about the same problem. Well, we really appreciate it. Guys, yes. in the comments below, let us know have you had an issue with your Ford motorhome? Have you had a, the same issue? If so, reach out to Mr. Howard, uh, talk to him. To the left of us, if you like videos like this, we're gonna put our RV news playlist, we'll put our RV tours playlist. And for myself, MJ, Mr. Howard, it's a journey of a lifetime. We'll see you, see guys you on, on the, road. the road. Thank you, everybody.